<laughs> we get the Brain Busters versus Strike Force. Uh, yeah. The Brain Busters are Arn, Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard. They could really, really wrestle, mm. and they're just great to watch. Yeah. They have that thing of that it looks, everything they do makes it look like they're trying to win. Yeah. They're trying to hurt someone. It's really, really good. I met Arn Anderson in 1991. Yes. Okay. I went to see WCW at Wembley Arena, their first tour, and by a total fluke, I, they, I we'd got front row seats, me and my mm. friend Russell, and we were sitting there, and I brought a sign, and it said he was doing a gimmick at the time about being a real man. <laughs> and I had, a, I had a sign, and it said, real men aren't bald on, right? <laughs> I held it up. And he came over, and he saw it, and he looked at it, and he sort of looked away, and then he came straight back to me, and he just went, he just went, you're a little motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I was really shocked. I was like, oh, it's like a cartoon character that's turned around and suddenly gone, hey kids, hey kids, go fuck yourself. Right? <laughs> Horrible. I was really, really upset. Uh, both from tapped me on the shoulder for, like an American guy and he said, oh, can we can we just take a photo of this for WCW magazine? Mm. And I went, sure. And I was holding up and I was thinking, if he finds out, <laughs> if this appears in the magazine, he's just gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna be like, right, what did I fucking say? <laughs> well, what are you doing in Hatch End on? <laughs> I, I've come down here on my huge rest of salary you believe I have. <laughs> it's probably about three million pounds a year that you think I've got and I have come here because I am going to kill you. <laughs> uh, and they break up Strike Force here which is Rick Martel and Tito Santana mm. and uh, this was a feud that seemed to go on for years and years Rick Martel he was always a good guy turned out he was a really really good bad guy as well yeah. um, you've got four guys in the ring here who are really really talented I yeah. could have happily watched them do 25 minutes yeah. and get rid of everything else around it well uh, Rick Martel kind of does a promo afterwards isn't he, and he, mm. like, or, he or he talks about what just happened in the thing and, and yeah. it, it was I quite enjoyed that Mr. Tito wants to write my coattail once more Ooh. but I'm sick and tired of him I've been carrying him around for too long already wait a minute Rick Martel you're out of line Strike Force was supposed to be a team, a team. I don't want to be associated with that guy. He's a loser. You saw his timing was way off. You're lucky that I'm being a gentleman that I am. I just walked off. I could have been a lot worse for you, Tino Santana. I think we've heard I'm enough. Tired. I'm Let's fed go up back with you. to you, Gorilla. Yeah, he comes across better than most of the people you've seen speaking. <laughs> There's a funny thing about how the, the interviews have got a lot better. People are mm. better. Even Hogan's better in this one. Yeah. He can follow a train of thought that isn't just it, like shouting at someone in a bar. <laughs> um, but Rick Martel does mm. a really good job there. And then we get a really bad job of talking, which is the Roddy Piper segment. It goes on for such a long time, oh. Mark. It is endless, and it's like flabby, just oh. flabby. You could have, you could lose ten minutes of that, and you wouldn't notice. You I, just really wouldn't notice. I was thinking it must be about the same length as like an episode of Inside Number Nine, <laughs> and you sit there and watch it, and nothing happens. You're building up to Roddy Piper spraying Morton Downey Jr., the talk show host, yeah. with a fire extinguisher because he's smoking. It takes me that long to say it. It takes them months ages cause to get like, through it because the bro brother love guy he comes on and he um, takes the mick out of Roddy Piper he does like again mm. all of this could be cut and because you don't need it you just no. need the Morton Downey thing who's the big star that presumably you paid to be there tell me something then uh, Mr. Downey you used to have all these nasty warts all over your face <laughs> big nasty green ones what happened to the warts? I gave them to a homeless warthog. I didn't know your girlfriend was homeless. <laughs> Mr. Downey. Yes, Mr. Piper. Don't blow no more smoke in my face. I want to ask you another. I'm not wearing a skirt, so that word doesn't go with me. He was like a, like a shock jock, wasn't he? He was kind of like yeah. Howard Stern before Howard Stern. There's and then a Howard Stern, really yeah. good documentary on Netflix about mm. him, um, which is just, I think it's called something like Motormouth. But he had a, you know, fascinating life. Mm. He was this really interesting guy and also the prototype of Jerry Springer, mm. essentially. That's right, yeah. He's so big at this point. You know, they use him probably quite well. They put him with Roddy Piper and Roddy Piper gets the upper hand. Great. Mm. But all this stuff with Brother Love is just, it just doesn't stop. But I don't understand why Brother Love had to be involved in that particular situation. No. He could just be happily just, and they rip his um, they rip his kilt off. Yeah, and he's wearing wrestling clothes, and everyone's yeah. going, "Oh, isn't that embarrassing?" I'm going, everyone's wearing isn't those clothes. It? Why, why aren't you laughing when Dino <laughs> Bravo and Ruggy Ronnie Garvin are wearing exactly the same thing as Brother Love? <laughs> because Ronnie Piper rips the kilt off, and he's got wrestling trunks on, and yeah. he, he's, he's holding his hands over it like he's new. <laughs> 
<laughs> but you're wearing essentially the work outfit. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, it didn't make any sense. The only bit I like in the Brother Love thing is br <laughs> Brother Love says, well, you're Scotch, and Roddy Piper becomes the first American in history to know the difference <laughs> between, between Scotch, Scotch and drink Scottish. and being Scottish. <laughs> in a joke that is absolutely mystifying to the entire room. <laughs> Nobody gets it. There's no reaction to it. <laughs> oh. If you're a little bit Scotch, then, then Scotch, did you say? Yeah, yeah Scotch! Scotch is what a Scotsman drinks, son. <laughs> you see. Now, if you are any part of you, a Scotsman, then uh, under that skirt there. Uh, this is a kill. No, 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 son. This here is a kill. That's a dress, baby. Huh. <laughs> oh. But Martin Downey Jr. He's um, he's a big smoker, and he's like this. I think he was part of like some kind of smoking league. Yeah, he dies of lung cancer eventually. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and he basically complains that I had spawned a generation of kids uh, thinking it was cool to smoke a cigarette. Mm. No one thinks you're cool. No, no, no kid uh, goes, "God, you're cool." Stop reviewing that yourself. forty-five-year-old man <laughs> with one lung <laughs> looks like he stinks. <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, he he actually does a better job on the mic than Piper because he. he <laughs> knows not to keep going. Yeah. He just says less stuff and it's more yeah. effective. And <laughs> oh my god. And then just when you're finally over, they recap the fucker. I, co I couldn't believe it. I was so like, let we get it. We've seen it. I've endured it. I don't want to relive it. Move on. <laughs> to, oh. to a trailer oh. for the film No Holds Barred this with is Hulk Hogan. So exciting. <laughs> um, are you ready for a whole new Hulk Hogan, it says, yeah. as a woman in suspenders comes over. And, and he gives her a kind of a comely look, doesn't he? Oh. He gives her a kind of like, oh, how's this going to turn? Absolutely vomit inducing. Yeah, I remember my dad was a big fan of the TV show Dream On back in the 90s uh -huh. and it was like it was a comedy show but it was a bit adult in that you saw some knockers every now and again yeah um, and tits and comedy to a younger audience is just a bit ugh yeah what it's just a bit I didn't need to be adult what am I supposed to be feeling here yeah <laughs> you know exactly. oh this is funny oh, uh, exactly, I'm yeah. horny <laughs> I'm it's I've never understood why those two things got together I remember, no. I remember Spike Milligan doing a, doing a TV show um, and getting his uh, knockers out well there was <sighs> there was like loads of like busty babes with their boobs out on like BBC2 or whatever it was and it was just like that was unnecessary I remember my mum uh, that she wouldn't let me watch Police Academy because uh -huh. that had boobs in it, <laughs> and I was like, "How dare you, Mum? You allowed me, and in fact recommended <laughs> the uh, the Spike Milligan, very late Spike Milligan, <laughs> kind of months before he died, Spike Milligan show." And check out this scene. Mm. Show me, Mama, me, me, Gran, and all those two look giving each other <laughs> right dirty looks. Who's responsible for this? They said I love the fact are. that you're essentially a child of dial-up internet, <laughs> and your mum was going, "You are not watching Police Academy <laughs> no, because the there things, are boobs there." The things I've seen. Go up, go up oh. to your bedroom and play with that magic box that, that takes you <laughs> onto the it. dark web. <laughs> <laughs> I will do, ma'am. Ma uh, uh, Hulk Hogan is rip in No Holds Barred. The trailer makes no sense. No, the film itself is well worth watching. <laughs> <laughs> really though? No. No. No, it's it, it's absolutely appalling. I would say it's Hogan's <laughs> second best film after Mr. Nanny. I it, like Mr. Nanny. It I beats it Suburban good. Commando, but that is an argument that I don't care to have. <laughs> um, it's it's not for me. Yeah. Um they did a pay per view match mm, yeah. called No Holds Barred. They and did. they included for the price of the pay per view a screening of the film later that year. Which yeah. is fascinating. It's, it what is. a clever thing to do though. Like sort of go, look, you get a film as well. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember really, really, really you get, you get three hours of the blood brother love shot. I, I remember actually <laughs> I mean I was I was what 13 when mm. this came out right and I was just getting into wrestling and I remember thinking I want to see this film so badly yeah. and I was looking at seeing like what was on the Harrow Odeon and it would never be no holds barred and you realize in retrospect it's just this really crappy homemade WWF financed film mm. starring Hogan to try and launch him and it's all that thing of it's tied up in pay-per-views, but they'll give a match as well to give a bit of added value. Yeah. And it, it's just appalling dog Pe shit. But people can smell bullshit. That's the difference, isn't it? I mean, yeah. It was bad. The guy who's a wrestler, a guy called Tom Lister, he was cast as Zeus. Mm. And he was a really big guy, and he looked like a wrestler, but wasn't a wrestler. And then they made him a wrestler, but he wasn't a wrestler. Ah. So he really had, to, he'd struggled doing it. But he was, you know, he was a thrilling look. Robert um, Swenson was uh, another character in that film. Mm -hmm. uh, again, from his Wikipedia, he played Bane in Batman and Robin. Oh, uh, yes. I, I, some Swenson. Jeep Swenson. Jeep Swenson. Mm. He died of heart failure at 40. Yeah. And 
Hulk Hogan, Debbie Boy Smith and James Caan gave eulogies at his funeral, which was followed by a final measure of his biceps and cremation. Good <laughs> God! <laughs> a final measure of I've, his biceps! I've not heard that one. Isn't that magical? Good Lord! I mean, it does say citation needed, but I'd, I'd like to think <laughs> that was, uh, I'd like to think that was correct. <laughs> uh, after you get this thing, you get over an embarrassment of riches, you had this terrible Morton Downey Jr. thing, you get this awful bit of No Holds Barred, <laughs> and then Sean Mooney does an interview with Donald Trump. Yes, um, Donald Trump gives the attendance numbers. Yes, he does. I wouldn't trust him. He, he After starts doing that thing, which you've never noticed until he became president, yeah. where he just says, it's fantastic, it's beautiful, fantastic, wonderful. Beautiful, yeah. He does that, and then he'll often throw in a third one that isn't related. Mm. So they go, oh, so what do you make of the attendance? And he goes, well, it's been fantastic, unbelievable, the traffic. He says, and it's just a weird <laughs> yes. thing to notice the things he does now. He was always yeah. doing can you give us some idea what an event of this magnitude means not only to Atlantic City, but to the Trump Organization? Well, it's brought people from, from thousands of miles away. It's been fantastic. It's been unbelievable. The traffic, the numbers of people. We're really honored to be here and honored that you folks joined us. It's a great honor. Well, I wanna th and also, when uh, the interviewer, he stumbles on his name a little bit. Oh, his yeah. eyes ah, boring the side of his doesn't head, doesn't he? It? <gasps> he? It's a really weird, horrible man thing he does, which yeah. I think is a powerful man powerful thing, move, yeah. where he refuses to let his eyes off him the entire time. Yes. He doesn't look away to look at the camera or the crowd. He's just peering at him, and you can see the interviewer slightly wilting under it. Mm. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, very Stop rich man. Stop looking at me. <laughs> Creepy. Oh. Uh, and then Jesse Ventura gets upset about, um, about Hulk Hogan. Hollywood like I is my domain! <laughs> That's so weird! Oh. Was Hollywood his domain? Uh, well, he, it, he, he's been in Predator. <laughs> 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 predator was in Predator. Could you pick him out of a lineup? <laughs> if they could have got Predators to wrestle Hogan <laughs> at this WrestleMania, I'd have watched that. Yeah, definitely. It's, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, Jesse always had this big thing about I'm Mr. Hollywood because he was in Predator. <laughs> right. uh, uh, it wasn't in a huge amount after that. <laughs> um, but again, this is the, the, the problem is Jesse Ventura was never going to wrestle again yes, due to okay. his sort of back injuries. Right. And he does the best promo in the whole thing. Mm. And you go, wouldn't it be good to see him and Hogan in the ring? Yeah. You know? I mean, they, they, they would have a sort of, like, rivalry later when <laughs> Jesse tried to start a union and Hulk Hogan immediately told Vince McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> and that led to Jesse sort of being fired and stopped the wrestlers being unionised. Yeah, nobody, nobody's buying tickets to that, though, are they? No, no. So that's very much a behind-the-scenes fight <laughs> that, uh, that Jesse lost. <laughs> I called them all together in the room we're sitting in and announced it to them. And that I, I hope that they would realize this was a personal decision, that it was not business at all, that it was me making a personal decision. I have to want to do this job, and I don't want to do it anymore. It's Bad News Brown versus Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Mm. Uh, as Bad News comes to the ring, someone reaches out to touch his head. And he, he sort of he like, jumps out of his swerves. He swerves. It was really good. Imagine trying it in, in walking real down life. the street. Imagine. Imagine doing it in real life. Imagine. <laughs> Oh, you would instantly turn into a gas of blood. <laughs> like, like a big cloud of blood. Why can't I see anymore? The last <laughs> thing I remember is I touched Bad News Brown's head <laughs> in public. And then, oh, what's this wet stuff on my chest, you know? Ah, oh, why, why can I see my own head? Oh my, he's knocked. <laughs> you know, uh, imagine just touching that man's head. Uh, this match, I mean, if you'd never actually done wrestling training and mm. you'd only watched it a few times, yeah. and someone said, can you go out and do this match? You could go, yeah. <laughs> no problem. And it's it's just like kick, kick, punch. You yeah. know when you used to get crappy wrestling games on the Game Boy? And when you didn't know this, any of the moves, yeah. you'd just be punching and, and kicking just, and punching and kicking. And you'd just keep yeah. walking over. And sometimes mm. you could win mm. just by doing the kick over and over again. Yeah. And then you'd step back and then you'd kick, kick, kick. I mean, it, it's like that. It's like watching that. <laughs> and the game will go oh. for ages because you didn't know how to pin. <laughs> yeah. And just be like, oh, endless. Yeah. Like, he's got no energy bar left, but I, I don't know how really how to do this. This one that ends in a double DQ as well, <laughs> which is like when you'd have to keep doing it until the time limit ran out. Yeah. I think the double DQ is because it's just so boring. They just like this needs to stop it's so bad this is uh, uh, matches like this make me feel a bit annoyed because I don't understand why you're not working harder bad news but, but maybe you were told not to do anything. well yeah maybe bad news gets his desserts in the next WrestleMania I believe yes he does he does he <laughs> and uh, it, a racist emotional assault yeah absolutely yeah. I that, mean, was, that was something if you google Ra Roddy Piper and mm. Wrestlemania comes up yeah. and you cannot help but click no you absolutely. Can, what the fuck is going on there absolutely. Roddy absolutely the other thing I look fucking about this fucking hell the the sad thing about it is Bad News Brown was good mm. and every WrestleMania match we've seen him in has been crap mm -hmm. and he's been really poor right. and he's no better in the Roddy Piper one right. and it's not necessarily his fault mm. but there's definitely something about him that he's in a lot of bad matches and the common denominator on that is Bad News Brown yeah. Bad News Brown and WrestleMania they go together like Roddy Piper and not blacking up at WrestleMania 6 <laughs> Oh, such a bad mistake. He, did, he didn't black up, he half blacked up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> have some respect for the craft. <laughs> um, Look at that 
Duggan, snot hanging out of his nose. He thinks nose. he won, Jess. Look at that guy. Look at that snot on his nose, Gorilla. That's horrible. Makes me want to puke.